think I am I can't believe you believe in that man We disagree but I still give a damn Your guru assures if you follow his regimen You will become a most excellent specimen The power to live on and on for all days Is right at your fingertips if someone pays I'm Sanal Idamaruko, uh, President of the Indian Rationalist Association and the Rationalist International yeah, I mean, I've been exposing, not, not, not to one miracle, hundreds and hundreds of miracles I've exposed over the last 30 years. But uh, perhaps uh, the most uh, serious expose, which has turned my life completely in a very different direction, mm -hmm. was the Mumbai uh, crucifix miracle, mm -hmm. where a crucifix of Jesus statue was dripping water from the feet mm -hmm. and I was invited to speak about this miracle I mean for a Mumbai television channel but I was in a studio in Delhi and I commented primarily that it's absurd and one need not even go and study about this thing because a statue would not release water mm -hmm. there's no source of water if unless and until there's a source of water it would not release water mm -hmm. So humans can cry, tears, sweat, I mean a lot of possibilities, but a statue is a statue. Mm -hmm. But there were representatives of the church on the other side. They insisted that this is holy water in any case, and it's a miracle. And a lot of people are getting cured with this water. And it was huge publicity in a live television program which they have been getting. And when I insisted that it could just be maybe a crack at the top of it and some rainwater has tra trapped into that thing. I don't want to study that thing. I would like you to study it unless and until you made a fraud of it. Mm -hmm. If you made a fraud, you would not find it. But if you haven't, go and look around it. You will find some reason. Right. I've gone to Mumbai and asked for a permission first of all to investigate the whole thing. It took some hours, but of course they have been making a small trap for me. Mm -hmm. Apparently they've been so angry about me for so many reasons. And of course, uh, now, when I have been in Mumbai, first uh, interesting thing that they have asked was, they gave me a hammer first. I said, why don't you hit the statue and see whether there is some water trapped in that? Mm -hmm. So I immediately understood what is the objective. The moment I take a hammer in my hand and hit it, they would take a lot of photographs, mm -hmm. and the next thing they would say that he has done it without our permission. Mm -hmm. Means I would be seen as a person, as a crazy person, damaging the statue. So I, I mean, I'm a very sensible person <laughs> and I said I don't want a stat I mean, hammer, I mean, my investigation will be very, very different and I started looking around. When I reached there, there were more than 300 people standing in front of the statue on a prayer. The priest was leading the prayer mm -hmm. uh, and halfway they stopped and distributed this collected water to them. And all these people have been taking their palm and licking it so properly, brought to me also. I did not take it, but uh, I asked for a sample, a little sample for it. They didn't give me, but one of my colleagues got it, and he, I mean, he sent it for later, mm -hmm. uh, a chemical analysis, and found the E. coli bacteria conduct in that. It was so many times more than human tolerance level, which, which means the, the water percent there was for quite some days. But I went behind this wall. Again, there was algae growing. And the algae line I followed and I reached the toilet and the toilet was leaking all around and stinky and it was not meant for the priest or bishop for some workers it was meant for mm -hmm. so they didn't keep it so clean mm -hmm. and then I again came back through the line and found that there is a there is a cover a metal cover on that thing mm -hmm. and I removed that metal cover where it is going down and it was cloaked dirty water for several days and it was stinking so heavily. And that's the place where there was water percent starting everywhere. So I understood uh, exactly what was happening. The cloaked water, mm -hmm. since it could not go further forward, it climbs through small holes that which is known as capillary reaction. And that is why it was wet on the wall. Mm -hmm. The same principle worked on the crucifix also, mm -hmm. because the base was cement, mm -hmm. it has climbed up there. But apparently it did not climb top up. At the feet of Jesus, there was a nail, 
and the nail hole uh, gave a way for this water to come out, drained out, mm -hmm. came through the teeth. That was my primary observation. But I wanted to ascertain it once again. I've gone back to the statue and touched on the leg of the statue. No, it was not wet. But on the nail I touched, it was wet. And on the feet it was still dripping. It, was, it has al already come a little bit down, but it was still dripping. Mm -hmm. I smelt it. And I had to wash it several times with soap. It was so sticky water. And that is the water which they have been mixing with other water and giving to people. They have been diary at the whole area for several days. And uh, the priest understood what I found. And he insisted that I should explain what I observed to the crowd there. The crowd was waiting. So uh, I'm a good speaker. I mean, I did not lose this opportunity. I said, come on, I, I speak. I started speaking about the whole miracle structures that is happening in India, in Hinduism, in Sikh religion, in other religions. Mm -hmm. And also even Catholic miracles which were rejected by the Pope. Mm -hmm. And also about scientific temperament, the importance of it. Then I found very interestingly, some of the old ladies who were sitting there, who came to witness this miracle, started shaking their head in, in approval. So the priest said, enough is enough. No, no more further speech. I went back to the I mean, my hotel room and I was supposed to come to the television at 9 o'clock for the prime show where I would get 10 minutes to explain this miracle. Mm -hmm. And uh, the church insisted that they should get an opportunity for a debate with me after the expose. I said, I have no problem. I would welcome any kind of debate. And uh, I got 10 minutes first of all. And in these 10 minutes, I have explained it so properly with pictures and charts and everything so convincingly. And it worked so well. The miracle ended that day. Over a thousand people used to visit this place to witness this miracle. Mm -hmm. And next day, nobody was there to collect the dirty water. The miracle is completely over. But uh, the television debate was a little hard because I was all alone. Mm -hmm. And five people, one shouting lady and a priest and a Supreme Court lawyer, I mean, so many people, five people, shouting and screaming and hysterically making a lot of sounds and, you know, they were overexcited and saliva was coming from both sides, so hysteric. And I was laughing and laughing and <laughs> it, <laughs> I mean, it was so convincing for anybody who would see that who is getting excited and why they are getting excited. And they insisted that God's law is that water goes downwards only, it never climbs upwards, mm -hmm. a lot of arguments they made. But... Uh, it was very clear that uh, I was triumphing this scene. I mean, the bishop telephones the studio and said to stop the program immediately. The studio, ref the channel refuses. Then he suggested that he want to talk to me over the program and he would like to join the program. So the Mumbai bishop joins the program. Right? And the discussion went on for the next 45 minutes. Went on the fundamentals of Christian belief. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a good show. I mean, I mean, I would say that quite interesting. The bishop insisted that uh, the scientific progress that Europe has achieved uh, has been because of Catholic Church. He apologized. Then he said, "You have to apologize too. Otherwise, you will be facing a very hard situation. You would not see sunlight again, and we are going to file cases against you." Is he saying this on TV? On TV live. And. Uh, and then, then he walks out angrily and uh, I, when I come out from the studio, the channel authority said that I should not go out now because these people have called some people from the church. They are waiting outside to beat me down. Some 50 people were there outside this television studio. But one cameraman came to me and said that, Sir, they are not from the church. They are professional gangsters in the town and they have hired them. And they are pretending that they are the church people. So they, they simply hired team stairs to attack me and claim that they were believers who were angry. Mm -hmm. So I could not go out and I remained in the studio for till 4 o'clock in the morning and I was taken out carefully for the back door later and I flew to Delhi. Next day they filed 17 cases against me in 17 different police stations using an old law which was never usually used in India. Yes. And uh, my lawyers went for a, uh, an anticipatory bail application to court. Because if I'm arrested, I don't have a bail. Mm -hmm. But before arrest, I could seek an anticipatory bail. If that's there, I cannot be arrested. The court looks into the case. Meantime, seven lawyers fly from Mumbai to 
defend their position. And court does not take a position. They said, why don't you go to Mumbai? We move. There the high, high Supreme High Court says, go to a lower court. And if it's rejected, come back to us. The lower court is closed because it was summer vacation. <laughs> so there was no way practically for me. And uh, it was very clear that they're trying to finish me off. And their discussion forums on the internet started speaking about very strange things. We have to get this guy for one night at least. And we should pay money to a co-prisoner to eliminate him, any amount of money we would pay. This kind of thing started coming and it was very clear things are dangerous. So therefore, to avoid the persons on before my life, I went underground. Mm -hmm. And despite the huge international publicity, the church is not willing to withdraw the case and the Archbishop came with a statement that I should, uh, they are willing to withdraw the case and end up the whole trouble for me, but I should apologize to the church. I said, even if you bring all the torture machines from medieval times, you would not get an apology from me. There it stands. And I leave in Finland running the organization from Europe. Now, now um, I do not know what's my personal future, to be very clear, because I would like to go back as early as possible. But I'm so sure that I would not be guaranteed freedom mm -hmm. and I would not be guaranteed a fair trial right. and I would not be guaranteed even security. So uh, I don't want just walk into a death trap. So I remain in Europe now for the time being. Mm -hmm. I travel around. I've been traveling in some 10 countries in the last one year. Gave some 70 lectures. I've gone to Ireland, Spain, Norway, Sweden, Germany, everywhere. And I don't stop. I would express my opinions and I would try to educate people. The only thing that can stop me would be death. But that, even death would not stop me because I've already trained hundreds and hundreds of people to carry on this struggle. So I'm not personally worried about my future. I'm sure that uh, even after me, the movement that I triggered in India, it's indefatigable.